All right, y'all. So this is part two to the uh, video uh, that I, you know, the satiety and the variety of food intake video. If you haven't watched part one, definitely encourage you to go watch that. It's all the science behind it. I talked about two articles and excerpts from the book, Hungry, The Hungry Brain. So here's the application to it. This won't make any sense unless you watch the other video. <laughs> um, so I talked a lot about, you know, I was talking about what they did in the research and you know so they have all these different studies now showing that in different varieties of foods and the more they differ the more your intake increases so intake increases with variety and the more they the foods differ from each other the more your intake can increase now everyone's gonna go oh well if you just count your macros and if you just listen <laughs> for the most part fitness industry lives in a little bubble. Um, I wish everyone in the world understood calories, macros, the importance of protein. I think that we are getting better as a nation, but I still go places and then I'm like, wait, there's no way people actually like don't know this. And people just truly don't. So for the, ma the majority of people who are just out of the loop, obviously there's a problem right obesity is everywhere obesity is skyrocketing every year so clearly there is something that is off so if something as simple as maybe eat simpler foods and use recommendations like that can help someone i'm all for it i am a hundred thousand percent for eating a variety of food i think variety is extremely important for micronutrients um for your sanity for so many reasons but in this specific context, possibly having high calorie, you know, just calorie dense foods in a lot in a big variety is maybe something that other people can't handle that well. So it's something that is easy, in my opinion, that we could tap into. That is something that people can change in their lifestyle, right? So as the the author suggested, like what the, a lot of the research is is talking about is extremely. Um, you know, for the humans at least, it was just very like bland food. Um, they even talk about some guy going on a potato diet, just potatoes, which sounds great to me, but <laughs> just a potato diet, right? So that's pretty boring, pretty bland, and he still managed, he managed to lose weight and kept it off, you know, whatever. That's not something that everyone's gonna be able to do, and that's not the point of all this. It's an extreme to showcase the, the point of what the research is. And maybe having a large variety of food consistently for certain people isn't a good idea. So I think recommendations like eat simpler foods, keep calorie dense, highly palatable foods, you know, less out of your reach is a good recommendation. And again, I don't want people jumping down my throat like, oh, you promote macros, you eat a lot of food. It's a completely, we're talking about two completely different types of people, right? Two completely different mindsets. And um, if you can control your calories and control your intake, you're, you're already doing great. You know what I mean? Like that is so far what we're talking about here. But there are a lot of people, and I know people working with general population or people who are struggling with this. So it's not just, I'm not talking to competitors. I'm not saying like, oh, never eat any variety in your meals. But I am talking about you know, for the general public, this may be a really good recommendation. And as much as I love a variety of foods, there's absolutely nothing wrong with telling people to limit the amount of calorie dense, highly palatable food that they're consuming. Because as we know, that's not quality food, quality nutrients. So again, as much as I love flexible dieting, um, I do think that certain people take that to the extreme and I don't think it's a good representa representation for a well-rounded nutrient dense diet that, you know, maybe somebody who's overweight or obese should be focusing on. Obviously, um, I don't even feel like I need to explain myself, but with social media, I feel like I do just because of the way that some people talk about food and post about food um, and what they showcase. It's just kind of like when people showcase like only when they're lean. A lot of people only showcase like the bad food that they're eating when in reality, I know what they're eating and they're just eating that as part of their day versus the rest of it is just very normalized, healthy, bro food, may I call it. Um, and that's just really the reality for most people who are who are focused on their physique goals and trying to live a healthy lifestyle. Um, so I also think that this, going back to the bro stuff, I think this is super interesting because think about when people eat bland diets and they have less cravings and, and you're, you, you look back and you're like, how did you eat that? Like, oh my gosh. And I don't know, maybe that like sets into all this, maybe having lower variety of food, maybe having a low set list of foods that you can eat and just like plain seasoned, not even really seasoned food, uh, like a very old school bodybuilding diet. Maybe that helped with people 
um, because I look at some of these guys, I'm like, I don't know how they would do that, but maybe this is like playing into that. Not really sure, obviously. They didn't study bodybuilders <laughs> on a plain diet, um, but just really interesting things to think about. Like, that's why I love reading because you can just, you learn so many new things and it gets you thinking about other, obviously other topics. So I think the application here, honestly, is just focus on, you know, quality foods and a modest amount of calorie dense, highly palatable foods. So yeah, I think that that's the best application we can take from all this. Don't stop eating a variety in your diet. <laughs> of course, um, a variety of healthy food is 100% recommended. Nutrient dense food is always, you know, the number one thing that I think people should focus on. Do I think that you can have highly palatable food in your diet? Of course, portion control is the most important thing. But obviously, again, there are certain things that make people overweight and obese, and there are ways to make things easier on people, right? Um, so instead of recommending, I think it's very detrimental to recommend to someone who is overweight and doesn't understand necessarily portion control clearly to say, yeah, just eat whatever you want and how much food you want. I think that that is a recipe for disaster initially. Um, this goes back to what I learned in my research that having structure is important and isn't bad. Having a meal plan isn't bad for people, right? Not everyone. So it's very case dependent. So I think all this can be taken um, in a positive way. Uh, again, I don't want people jumping down my throat thinking like, oh my God, Lauren said that you can't have a variety. No, 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 you guys. <laughs> That's why I wanted to make two videos on this and make this very, very well thought out. So. I think it's an interesting line of research. I don't think it's the end-all be-all. I think a variety is very important, but I do think that it is something that we could consider, again, for you know recommendations for people. When satiety is not there, people overeat. And when there's a greater variety, people can't overeat. So why don't we eliminate that, at least in some portions of their day, to just make things easier? So these are just a few papers, a few lines of research. Uh, I would highly, highly suggest, again, to get this book hungry brain it brings up a lot of really interesting ways that our brain has adapted obviously over thousands of years <laughs> and i think it's something worth looking into and you know clearly there's an obesity epidemic for a reason so there are certain ways that we can make things easier on ourselves and other people so take this for what it's worth hopefully you guys enjoyed part two um if you haven't checked out part one this won't make sense so definitely uh let me not let me know how you guys like this um this was a lot of work obviously with like the two papers reading them and and the book and stuff so hopefully this was well received uh and let me know what you guys think below i love reading comments um from you guys how you guys like this so thank you so so much for watching uh and have a great day